Hey, Mr. Miyagi, what are you doing? Jared Polin. Fro knows photo.com here with the raw file edit of the week. Uh, more of, I'd say this is more of Greg's style of what the editing will end up being. Um, I haven't touched this file yet, but I'm really interested to see what comes out of it. It's, it's an interesting picture of it. That's a huge barn and silos and stuff. It would be an awesome photo studio, don't you think? Imagine having this open land followed by an awesome, huge, lofty barn. Like, I could see this place. I'd love to live there if it was, like, a cool loft but, and had more windows. But you'd see there'd be, like, an upstairs shooting space, a downstairs shooting space. I, I love using my imagination to create these awesome spaces. But this isn't about using your imagination to create what you would think would be a great studio. This is about editing this raw file. Uh, that was shot at one three, wow, one thirty two hundredth of a second at f fourteen ISO twenty five hundred. Interesting, fifty eight millimeters on the eighteen to one oh five three five five six Nikon shot with the D ninety. Well, first things first. I don't think you need to be at twenty five hundred ISO in the bright daylight, um, especially getting one thirty two hundredth of a second. You do want to try to get your ISO as low as possible uh, to save face when it comes to your your uh, noise. You, you can start to see that the noise is really being introduced here, the grain slash noise, and there's really no need for that unless you were going for something specific when editing this file or when you were shooting this file. Uh, doesn't have to be, you know, landscape F14 means that everything is pretty much going to be in focus from front to back. This grass and tumbleweed stuff is in focus. This background is in focus. Of course, that should be the main subject. Um, and pretty much everything in the windmill is in focus. So, you know, I would have maybe have liked to seen a lower uh, aperture to to try to isolate the building away from the foreground and let the foreground blow out a little bit. Uh, I mean, that that's what I see in this. But now we're going to edit it and see what we come up with. Um, boom, 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 boom. Okay. Contrast just went boom. I like that already. Look at the contrast goes from... From yay to yay, nay, yay, nay, yay. Anyway, I'll stop right there. So it went boom, boom, boom. And it's a warm day, so let's get some yellow in here. Or it could be a cold day. It just I want it to be warm. I seem to be losing some of my sky. See, now I'm making it seem like it's a... The sun is right here. It, it looks like golden hour. Uh, that's the last first hour, last hour of the day when you're losing your light, and it's at a very low angle. Um, you can see all the shadows over here. If I could find a shadow, I'd be able to tell you what time. And you could sort of see these shadows. Uh, maybe it's in the middle of the day because it could be pumped up. Is there information? Let's see. About time this was taken. If the clock was right. 417. What date? September 20th, no, September 17th, so it's, uh, what is, it? is that after daylight saving? I don't know, but it's close, and, hey, where'd my edit go? Oh, there, I have to hit that button. So let's pull back on this a little bit. I think it's a little too boomerific, even though you can never have too much boomerifics in your files. So a little bit of that. What's black and white look like? Boring today. And now that I say that, Greg probably went black and white. A little bit brighter. I'm sure I'm losing some details that Greg's going to want to keep, but you know me. I don't look at this stuff about details. I look at the image and see what I think. I definitely think it needs a lot of fill. Like, oh yeah, that's it right there. No, it's not. And what can we do with the sky? That's taking that blue out. That's adding more blue. Ooh, you can see that grain. Look at the look at the noise going on in here. Pretty noisy. I'd like to I'd be interested um to see why it was shot at 2500 ISO, but let's see. There's the, where we started. And I, I like this a little bit. I it's a little too yellow for my liking. So I'm going to pull back slightly on the yellow. Let's see what happens with an addition of some magenta. Mm, that gives it that very old feel. So, I don't like the green. I don't like introducing green into my photos. It just makes everything look weird. Okay, we've got some dust spots. That's what's going to happen at the higher apertures, like F14 and things like that. This is a simple correction. Touch that. Goodbye, green. 
grain. I mean, goodbye noise. Here's more noise. Jesus, Jared. No, not Jesus. Come on, Jared. It's called dust. From dust till dawn. All right, so we got rid of that dust. Two quick edits using the healing brush, which is simple to use. Click where you want it. Well, it's simple to use when it's in the sky. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. Beginning, after. Curious to see what Greg does here, if he's going to grade 8 the sky or whatnot. But it's more of his style. Let's see what he does or did, whichever way the video went first. Jared Poland, fro knows photo.com. See ya. Greg Cazillo, fro knows photo.com. Blue skies. I love blue skies, especially when we have a really great contrast in between a red barn and a blue sky. Doesn't get any better. So, look at our histogram. We're just a hair under, which is good. Okay, this is a, this is a good exposure, I believe. But I'm going to brighten it up even just a little bit more, I think. Just a little bit. Because I want to bring in my blacks. And when I bring in that blacks, watch. look at those reds. Look at the difference. Look at the reds, how I made those reds pop. By opening up my exposure just a little bit. And then bringing in those blacks. Really made everything pop. Yeah, you could do it with saturation, with vibrance, with all the others. But this was just another method that works for this image. Now, we have our tone curve, as always. Uh, I think I want to go a little bit warmer again, as, as I usually do. But not a lot. We're just a little on the cold side. So, you know what? Let's see where this gray brings it. 4,800. No. No. I think we want to be up in about the 55, 5600 range. Yeah. I think that's good. I like the warmth. It, get, it just gives it a good feel. Now, I think I actually want to change the hue back of the sky. So let's go back and get rid of some of that green and give ourselves that solid blue color. Somewhere in here I think so now we have the best of both worlds we have the no really really nice warm ground and up here we have all of that really nice blue color let's bring our luminance down a little bit just a touch doesn't need a whole lot okay just to deepen that sky a little bit love it really really cool image now, a couple things that I noticed, uh, you may or may not be able to see it from, you, from your angle on there. We do have some dust spots on the sensor. Always want to clean those up. Letter Q gives us that, our spotting brush. And so we're just going to clean that bad boy up. There's a couple here and there. There's one over there. Clean that up. Makes a big difference. You just don't want to see those spots in a final print or a, you know, a final ever anything. So we'll just get rid of those. And they're always really apparent on a blue sky. They just pop out at me. Some people don't even pay attention to them or maybe don't even see them, but they just they really really pop out at me. Now something that I notice when I'm in here at 100 percent is it. I don't know. I just want to smooth it out a little bit for some reason. So I'm going to go down here to detail. And I'm actually going to use a little bit of noise reduction. Not a lot. I just want to smooth the colors. Alright. And this is probably a good... You know what? Let's go even, in even farther. Let's go into 1 to 2. Sorry, 2 to 1. And... Let's go back and forth. See how it's just smoothing those colors just a little bit. It's kind of taking a little bit of the contrast out in between one pixel to the next in between them. But... Just overall, I like it's a little bit of a smoothing effect that that luminance is giving. Other than that, I think we're just about done. I really don't see much else that needs done. Our horizon line is nice and straight. Again, exposure is really good. We have good highlights here and there. Love the composition. Everything works. This is it. Greg Cazillo, Fro knows photo.com. See ya. 
All right, I am definitely sensing a fight right now because I look at mine and it goes boom. I look at Greg's and it goes like somebody just threw up and that's the color you ended up with. And you know what I think? What do you think? I think you got way heavy handed with your vibrant slider and you just took it for a walk and you just left it somewhere way out in right field because it's just so oversaturated. This guy is just terrible. It goes pop and yours goes. No way. Look it's, at it. Look, look at this so color. Unnatural. Look at this flat, boring. Go back to yours. That sky is so unnatural, Jared. You gotta be kidding me. I think the sky looks nice and blue, like it's a. <laughs> you are so full of it, dude. I am not full of it. You will never ever see a, na a sky that really looks like that because it's just the wrong color. Yeah, but this is just like so flat. It looks like it's just blah. It's turquoise. What the you hell is make turquoise? Turquoise colored sky. That is not a good color. That is not a natural color. That I don't. I like mine. You, you could say you like it all you want. I hate it because it's just too oversaturated. Oh, you hate it now, do you? It's way too oversaturated. All right. I, the, the, the barn is way too red. Uh, Tony, you, I think it was just an accident. That you just happened to drive, drag that saturation or vibrant <laughs> slider way to the right. Oh, I like it. I like it because I'm oversaturating it. Hey, Give me a break. <laughs> well, here. A break, let, let, let's take a break on ripping on each other. And let's let's do some criticism of, of the photo because... You know, I noticed this in my video, and from watching your video, I'm surprised you didn't point it out, but we're outside in bright daylight, and we're shooting at what ISO? 2500. 2500, which is, which is pushing that camera, which is pushing any, I mean, if you're shooting with the D3, D700, sure, have fun shooting at 2500, but I mean, shooting at 2500 ISO out in bright daylight is, um, there's really no need unless... No, there is no need, right, Greg? No, not at all, not at all. Exposure bias, luckily, was even. Oh yeah, no that's flash. Good. Um, we were, we did have center weighted, which once again is not needed in this. You know, you don't use center weighted in a shot like this. You use the matrix metering to meter the whole thing. What do they call that on the Canon? Uh, they call it evaluative. No. I don't know. Everything, not center weighted or not spot. Yeah. It, uh, so you want, yeah, you want a metering and everything. But ISO 2500 outside, I honestly, Jared, I think this is one of those cases where the guy just forgot, walked from outside, from inside to outside. I hope so. The camera and shot it and just didn't think about it. I hope so. Yeah, I, I hope um, that's the case, that it was an accidental thing, which means just don't forget to check your ISO. But it's something you should notice. When you're shooting and you're looking through your viewfinder, when you see one thirty-two hundredth of a second at what was the aperture? F fourteen. Oh yeah, well at f fourteen, I mean maybe you, you know what it is. What I figured it out. The exposure program was set on normal, which means that they were using P for professional. Come well, on. Well. Or auto ISO, but even auto ISO, I don't know why it would have chose. Well, who knows? I've never used auto ISO. Me neither. But you know, I still think the blues in my skies look much better, and yours still look yellowy and blah. No, I adjusted them so that they look normal and not oversaturated. Well, I will say this though: after I did finish editing my video, I noticed that it was too. Um, there was one tweak that didn't work properly. That I went back and just made it one slightly tweak. Oh, so now you're cheating. No, no, no. I noticed this after I hit stop on my video. This is before I saw your video. And I made, you know, I accidentally touched the slider and it had too much uh, green. I wanted to go up in my magenta. So I just did that. And that's what this file looks like. I don't know. I think you're cheating. <laughs> yeah. If I was cheating, Greg, and I wanted to cheat off of you, we'd be, I'd be in trouble because I'd look like flat and blah. <laughs> It's like Flat and Blah said hello to each other and met and married in Greg's barn over here. Nah, nah. I'd rather have a normal-looking sky, a nicely colored barn, and a, you know a, a nice brown foreground. Just it's you can't it's see me shaking just my head. Enough. You can't see me shaking my head. I, I made I, it. I, I don't care if you shake your head or not. I made it go pop, pop, boom. You made it go pop, pop right out of the whole atmosphere because you never see a sky that color. I've seen skies that color, and I've captured skies that color myself. Yeah, you're so full. You remember that wedding we did uh, in New Jersey last year for the art gallery guy? 
It was not that color. It was that color. Oh, you're so full of it. Well, it was, I made uh, it. Maybe if you made it I that made color. It that color. <laughs> I made it that color after I edited it. Yeah, well, that's not a natural color. This is a natural scene. This is a uh, you know a normal barn scene, probably out in the Midwest somewhere or something. You yeah, know, I don't know where the It's probably in England, from, Greg. <laughs> I don't know. This doesn't work for me. All right, it does so not work. we we can we can leave it at that. But why don't we again put the raw file up over there in the forum? Click the link below in this. Uh, what do they call this? A post, which will take you to the raw file. And you can then tweak it and edit it and see if you make make your sky go boom, boom, pow. Or in Greg's case, say whatever you, yours is, Greg. Just enough. Ju- yeah, just enough, my left ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, watch, those, watch your exposures. Watch your settings. Pay attention. Shoot more in manual. And learn your ISO yeah. shutter speed and aperture. Well, with saying that, of course, try manual. You're shooting a barn. It's not moving. There you go. Right? The barn's yeah. not going anywhere, so you have a, you have the ability to play with your file, uh, to play with your exposure, and tweak it out there. But definitely watch your ISO, and learn it. Learn from this. Learn from, you know, go back and look at your images and say, what am I doing wrong? If you zoom in on the sky on one of those photos, Jared, you're going to see these huge softballs for pixels. Yeah, and you shouldn't see them uh, in a, in an image like this. You'd have a nice, clean sky all the way across that is true. you just don't have that in this image because it was shot at 2500 so go back look at your images evaluate and improve as a photographer all right i'm petting the kitty right here hi me nice. all right jared poland fro nose photo dot com see ya